Happy New Year, and welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. Here we have Chris on in Tombsday versus Peter on Esper Vile. In a rare situation here where actually I started recording, the names are wrong, so I am going to be aware of some of this. And we've got a Dark Ritual in Tomb, Shallow Grave for the Gristle Brand. Going to get seven more cards. And another seven. And this is very bad news for every deck in the format to be facing down. He's got a Lotus Petal. And it looks like Entombing for, Gris, uh, for Emrakul. And now another Shallow Grave. Not sure I totally followed that. Maybe there was a Dark Ritual in there that I missed. Uh, but 14 cards is an awful lot. Pretty difficult to lose from there as Chris is able to tag team with Gristlebrand and Emrakul on the first turn. Both given haste thanks to Shallow Grave. And that is an absolute mess for pretty much all decks to have to face down. Gristlebrand I do think is the most important part of the show and tell style strategies a lot of people actually push heavily towards the emerald builds and i'm not gonna lie drawing a ton of cards while there is a potential danger of cool things there you don't want to of you don't want to do things that are not winning instead of winning like that that is a thing that happens sometimes sometimes we have an option and we take the thing that is cool and splashy because it usually leads to winning, and sometimes you miss a guaranteed win. So, I mean, that is something to consider, but overall, it's hard to go wrong drawing a ton of cards with Gristlebrand when you're playing a deck that can convert those cards into even greater of an advantage. So, Lotus Petals, Dark Rituals, you're going to be able to play so much of what you're drawing. You have free spells in the form of Unmask, potentially, and Chris's in Tombsday you're wondering about the odd name is this entomb tin fin style deck that also has the option post board of playing doomsday which allows you to sidestep graveyard hate potentially so it's going to be very interesting to see how this post board game goes esper Vile has a lot of options we see the counter spells as access to discard of course the white core there gives it a lot of dna with death and taxes so this could be a real nightmare deck for like a reanimator builds to struggle against. You've got kind of every access you can be attacked on. You can be attacked on the stack with counters. You can have your hand attacked. And then on board, you have to deal with things uh, like Caracas, potentially, Swords to Plowshares. And I guess even additionally, they can attack your graveyard. So usually that graveyard is another axis of attack where people have a difficult time interacting with it. But, I mean, Esper Vile has all the tools to engage... Chris on every possible battlefront. We'll see what happens here in game two. Game one, he was simply too fast. Sometimes you're just going to throw it a force of will check. If they don't have it, you win. Nothing wrong with that. If you're not going to be comfortable doing that, you do not want to be playing a deck like in Tombsday. You can't be timid with this type of build. All right, so game two, a lot of shuffling. And I get the feeling, though I can't hear the audio, seems likely there's a bit of banter here. And we've got a Marsh Flats being sacked for a Aether Vial. Can create a lot of problems as the game goes. We have a Ponder for Chris. Aether Vial, the mana advantage that it produces over a long game can be absolutely ridiculous putting in two and three casting cost creatures for no mana. Just that initial one mana investment can pay massive dividends. And now we have two mana. What is that? I guess let me know in the comments what this hate bear is. We got a two casting cost, and it's either... I mean, it's a white card. I'm guessing one and a white. I can't tell what it is. Flooded Strand has been added to Chris's board. He passes the turn. 
I mean, maybe it's one of the new art Thalias. Prismatic Vista being sacrificed. Basic land incoming. It's going to be a swamp, so all colors available to Peter here. Blue with that tundra. Also has double white, and it's probably all the mana combinations that he might need. And yeah, just swinging for... Oh no, we got to fetch first as an attack. We'll figure out the power of this creature. Hits for two. Yeah, maybe it's one of the new Thalias. I don't recognize the art, although I don't actually remember all of the art from the new secret lair. Uh, well, probably not a Thalia, because he just paid one mana for a spell. Oh, and I did not actually catch that one. It looks like a discard spell, perhaps. Baleful Strix being put in. And we see Skycloud Apparition, Flicker Wisp, and Force of Will. Force is taken. So likely a Duress. No life change, so wouldn't be Thoughtseize, and Inquisition can't hit the card. Kind of sleuthing things out here a little bit. And a, what looks like a Altered Underground Sea for a Ponder. Or preordain. It looks like cards went on the bottom of the library. Yeah, technically, those spells go onto the stack and remain there until they've resolved. So, technically speaking, those spells would be visible for quite a while longer. Once the spell is in the graveyard, it's resolved. So, Charming Prince added to the mix. Oh, I thought it was Charming Prince. No, I guess it's a Stoneforge Mystic. He's picking up his library. Wow, what a way to kick off the new year. We got a bunch of cards here that are stumping me. Hmm. Three mana here from Entomb's Day. Chris. Playing the namesake card here, Doomsday. This could be a problem. If it resolves, very often this is going to just end the game. Now, Doomsday, for those unfamiliar, probably because it doesn't see very much play due to the difficulty of playing it flawlessly. There are a lot of different Doomsday piles that you can potentially make. We're going to have a five-card deck set up however Chris wants. Now, the original Doomsday decks uh, that I recall in Vintage, uh, I believe the first ones that I saw really do reasonably well involved... Dark Ritual, Black Lotus, Mind's Desire, and then, uh, let's see, Mind's Desire, there's one more card in there, maybe it was a Gataxian Probe, oh, it was Ancestral, I think it was Ancestral into Dark Ritual, Black Lotus, Mind's Desire, and then Beacon of Destruction, so you would actually end up a, with a Mind's Desire with uh, four Storm, and have a single beacon of destruction in your deck, so you would just cast it, then it would get shuffled back in, and you would just do 20 to your opponent. Now, that was kind of a default pile of that deck. And, of course, there's been many printings that play very well with Doomsday over the year. Most recently, Thassa's Oracle, I think, probably streamlines the deck to be its most user-friendly at any point in history. There are plenty of things that I can play around and play through. One of my favorite interactions with Doomsday back in the day, however, was, believe it or not, Strip Mine. There were so many games uh, when Doomsday was popular that I would absolutely blow them out of the water 
with a well-timed strip mine. Time walk being what it was. You know, you, you could time walk or strip mine, time walk, recur the, the strip mine from the graveyard and then blow up that other land. And then that's actually your win condition. They've gone down to five cards left in their library. They literally can't win with that now that they've been denied the resources and there's there's no coming back from that time walk was just it's one of my favorite magic cards uh, just something that is missed a little bit for me in in legacy but it's totally fine that vintage has that on its own we're going to skip over this trouble here okay so that was actually a charming prince it did flicker the recruiter of the guard to get hull breacher and now hull breacher is showing up to absolutely ruin the party as chris cannot get past that his doomsday pile absolutely needed to be able to deal with the situation and it might have actually been lethal on its own there i'm not sure either way that is going to peter as we are off to game three. So Esper Vile does have the tools to fight against this. We'll see what other hate bears, problem cards it might have for Chris to have to play around. All right, here we go with game number three. And Tombsday going to be on the play. Last time he had the play was a turn one win. Underground C being fetched up. We'll see what he does with this mana. Flashes an Entomb. Plays the Entomb with double Lotus Petal first. And as hard fought as game two was for Peter, it looks like it could all be undone here with a Goro's Vengeance. Peter's got the Force of Will. Oh, and Chris shows he is hellbent. And that is just how this is going to play out sometimes. We'll see if he can rebuild. Peter allowing the Entomb to resolve and denying the Goro's Vengeance, seemingly getting the value out of those sacked Lotus Petals, but this is still a dangerous situation. Chris could top deck a Shallow Grave or Goro's Vengeance at any point in the game here and potentially win on the spot very often you're going to want to stop that in tomb as getting the creature into the graveyard can be the harder part we'll see how this plays out let me know in the comments how you would play that given the decks and the match count i mean that's a consideration too i think whether or not you're playing for the match or if it's a situation where you're up a game that is Potentially a different consideration about the amount of risk that you're going to be willing to take. Coming across for two. And now Recruiter of the Guard. Chris is fetching in response to Recruiter. And taking out the hate bear, which I'm not sure if we figured out if it was Thalia or not. He did pay two mana for his removal spell. But we did not see what the removal spell was. Baleful Strix being found off of Recruiter of the Guard. And now Shallow Grave is top decked. Meriting another Force of Will. Peter with all the answers. And it looks like Chris actually scooping it up, surprisingly. There was certainly a lot of potential left in that game. But the second Force of Will going to be the backbreaker for him. I mean, it was not likely to get better, but that was game three. So that is it for this one, as Esper Vile just overwhelms uh, this very interesting Tinfin's Doomsday list. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more... Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.